Woohoo! Welcome back. Today we're going to be working with logarithmic equations. Yay! And this is following up with what we were working on yesterday when we were looking at exponential equations and how to get Liam's x back. Liam is upset again because, as you can tell, his x is wrapped up in something really messy. And so we need his help in bringing the x out and getting it to safety. So Liam has a very particular set of skills other than just seething on the phone and making threats. He actually knows how to convert logarithmic form to exponential form. Woohoo, which I wanted to remind you about because it's been it's been a hot minute since we used this. So, what are what is this going to help us with? Well, so how do we recognize we have a logarithmic equation? Unlike before when we had an equation with exponentials, here it's actually a lot easier because you'll either see log or natural log or another log, log base 12, log base 17. So you'll actually see the log in the equation. And once you have a logarithm in the equation, your first go-to is going to be going between the logarithmic form and the exponential form. So that's just going to be the game plan. So let's go ahead and see if you and I and Liam can get these X's home safe. And, and then, you know, he, he will turn back into happy Liam. There you go. Okay. So first one, log. And then you notice I have parentheses. Remember that if you want to take the logarithm of a product, you have to put the parentheses in. It's order of operations. So log of the quantity 4x equals 3. It's a logarithmic equation. My first go-to is convert to exponential form. So here, I'm going to have Liam sit over here. Thank you, Liam. So we've got log. And I'll remind you, when we have just a logarithm and no base, then it's 10. Remember that if it said ln, it would be e. Okay, log base 10 of 4x equals 3. We're going to convert to exponential form. So what does that look like? Well, I'll remind you. It was just up here, but let me put it in here again. The base becomes the base in the exponential form. The argument, whatever's here, whatever's right there in the parentheses, becomes the answer. And the previous answer becomes the exponent. So we go from base, and then we go across the equation to get the exponent, and then we come back to the argument to get the answer. So I'm going to start with the base, 10. I go across the equation to get the 3, and then I come back to get the 4x, which becomes the answer. Woohoo! Okay, let's go ahead and continue. And I'm going to make a little note here. I'm going to say convert to exponential form. Woohoo! Okay, let's keep going. Well, now the good news is I know what 10 cubed is, and it's it's pretty straightforward. It's a thousand. And I'm feeling pretty lucky right now because if it were e cubed, I wouldn't be able to write it out. Uh, I'd only be able to write out an approximation. So a thousand equals four x. What's the next step? Woohoo, you got it. Divide both sides by four. And a thousand divided by four, I happen to know is 250. You can always use a calculator for that. So in other words, x equals 250. Woohoo! Now it says round to three decimal places if necessary. This is a whole number, no rounding necessary. Liam is happy. Happy Liam, we got his x home safely. Woohoo! Yay! Okay. So, but sure enough, I mean, there's an endless supply of these logarithms that are willing to take his x hostage. So let's come down here. Oh no, Liam is, oh, oh, so upset. His x is stuck inside this logarithm. And is it common log? No, it's log base three, which is going to make it just so much more complicated. Oh, thank goodness he has a particular set of skills. And again, I'll remind you, logarithmic form to exponential form. Okay, pardon me, Liam. 
So Liam's going to go over here. He's going to continue to make threats on the phone. And I'm just going to rewrite. Oops, sorry. You know what? I lied. I'm going to put him on the phone over here. There we go. There you go, Liam. Okay. So log base three of four X plus two equals five. Again, I almost always rewrite the problem just so that I know I have caught all the little subtleties there. And again, the base of the logarithm becomes our base for the exponential. So my base is three. And then I go to get to, sorry, to get to the exponent, I'm going to go across from blue to purple. So I go from three to five. Five becomes the new exponent. And then the argument here becomes the answer, that thing right there, 4x plus 2. And I bet Liam knows a lot about arguments, right? Or at least the, the characters he plays on, on the movies. I, I don't want to suggest that the actor is actually angry. I don't know. Logarithms might make him angry. Um, you know, I'll, I'll ask him next time I see him. We're, we're totally best buds because he helps me with math. Okay, so I'm going to write convert to exponential form. Okay, now, oops, sorry, you can't see that. Okay, Liam is still, uh, but he's feeling better because now we got his x out of that logarithmic situation, and now it's over on the right-hand side. So we've got what looks to be kind of a linear equation. 3 to the 5th feels a little bit uncomfortable, but what we could do is we could go ahead and grab our handy-dandy calculator. Woohoo! And let's see, three to the fifth. Oh, I'm sorry, Liam. I am constantly moving Liam. Sorry about that. Okay. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Rookie maneuver. Okay, three to the fifth. So I'm going to use my exponent key, three. I've got this cool exponent key right there, x to the square. You might have an x to the y or something else. Three to the fifth. That little rooftop arrow thing, that means exponent. And if you're using a keyboard to do this and you want to enter it into, say, Google to calculate, because Google has a calculator, or Desmos has a calculator, lots of calculators online, you would use the little character that's above the six on most keyboards. Okay, 243. Okay, that's not too bad. Three to the fifth is 243. Okay, so I'm going to write that down equals 4x plus 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, now what should I do? I can subtract 2, right? Now it becomes a linear equation. And suddenly this very complicated equation becomes a much simpler version of itself, right? These equivalent equations. 241 equals, what is it, 4x? Oh, no. Ugh, we're going to have fractions. Oh, oh, we're going to have fractions. It's okay, though. We can get through it. We have these particular set of skills that involve fractions. So 241 over 4 equals 4x over 4. I hate to go sideways with you guys, but I will. Okay. And you know what? This morning, this morning, I haven't had my coffee. So I'm going to totally do this one on the calculator 241 over 4. I'm perfectly capable of doing it. I just don't trust my numbers. 241 divided by 4. And what we could do is you could give it a guesstimate just to practice, you know, use your brain. 241 divided by 4. I think it's going to be about 60. But I'm going to check with my calculator. Woo oh, 60.25. Woohoo. Woohoo. Okay. Now, can we check both of these? Yes, we can. But the lesson I learned yesterday was if I check everything, then the video is 45 minutes long, and then it takes eight hours to upload onto YouTube. So I'm not going to check today. But you should definitely check your answers. And if you have any question about how you would go about doing that, please let me know. Because woohoo, um, checking is important. And Liam, 
who was very, and I can call him by his first name because we're such good buds after doing all this work together. Um, Liam, very, oh, his ex is wrapped up in some bad stuff, but then his ex is out and safe and it's happy Liam. Yay. Okay. Shall we do some more? Hey, how about if we go a little bit more exciting? You guys ready for a little more excitement? Yeah, this I promised you action and adventure. Dun, dun, dun! Um, I'm not sure whether this is action or adventure, but oh, another one of Liam's exes. It's, he's got a lot of exes, let's be honest. Um, another one of Liam's exes is stuck in a logarithmic situation. Oh, oh. And again, I'm going to use this same um, process. I'm going to use the same technique. It looks a little bit different because remember, and I'm going to move Liam to the side, when I rewrite the problem, I don't know why I put that, that mark there. I Sometimes, like I said, my hand just, you know, decides it's going to do something. It's, it's going to exert its autonomy. Okay, so I've got natural log of 3x. Ooh, a little shady in there. Oh, sorry, Liam equals negative 0 0.4 and I'm going to write it out as log base e of 3x equals negative 0 0.4. You do not have to write this step out. I'm just writing it out so it's more clear to the folks who are just reading the notes what the heck happened. So it's just a little reminder. You don't have to do this. It, you're welcome to. Okay, so again, I've got a single logarithm and so what do we do? We take the base and we go across to get the exponent. And then we come back to get the 3x. Woohoo! Well, that's very exciting. Except that I don't know what this is. And in fact, this is, you can't know exactly, well, I should say, you don't have enough time to know exactly what this equals because e is this beautiful kind of irrational number that's also transcendental and it's just, it just keeps going and going and going and going like irrational numbers do. And so we could never write down the whole thing. So instead we're going to use e to give us that exact answer. I'm not going to try to round right now because I'm not done yet. Liam is still upset. Oh, if, if I had a soundtrack, there'd still be, you know, tense music. Oh, is he going to get her or him or them? Um, is he going to get X out? Woo we don't know. And then at the last minute, oh my gosh, big explosions. And Liam divides by three because, you know, he knows math. I really do believe that in my soul. And uh, so he knows that if you divide both sides of the equation by three, you end up with X. His X is safe. Yay. Happy Liam. His X is safe. Now, the bad news is, is that uh, somebody, and I'm not going to name names, but I mean, it it's somebody whose title rhymes with Mofessor wrote this round to three decimal places. Ugh. So, okay, but that's okay because let's be honest. Do you know what e to the negative 0 0.4 equals off the top of your head? It's an exact, this is an exact answer. This is the perfect, beautiful answer. But for a lot of people, this is not terribly useful because like if I said this was equal to six, would you say okay? If I said it was negative 432, would you say okay? So, Coming up with an approximation helps us understand what the answer actually means and represents. So, okay, calculator. Woohoo! So, again, on my calculator, sorry, it's hard to raise this up and not, oh, I gotta clean that screen. Sorry about that. So, right there, see that, that key, e to the box, 10 to the box? This calculator is gonna do the same thing with exponentials. Okay, I'm just saying it fancy for fun, as it did with logarithms. If you press it once, you get e to the x. If you press it twice, you get 10 to the x. Okay? So, for this one, I'm going to use that key. And the nice thing is, for a lot of calculators, let me bring this in. Ooh, surprise! From the side. A lot of calculators, to get to the e to the x, you have to use the second key. So we do second natural log, and that gives us the e to the x. The great thing about this calculator, which I really do love, but it's it's a lot. 
it's expensive and it's at, well, right now it's expensive. Who knows? If you're watching this video in 20 years, perhaps you're going, what's a calculator? I don't know. But, um, <laughs> hopefully you're not saying what's math. I just want to say hello from 2021 and say, if you're watching this in the future, please tell me that everything turns out okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Back to the, back to the regular. So it's really nice because I can just press that and I got it. No seconds, no nothing. And so, oops, sorry. I want my exponent to be negative. Now on my calculator, I use this minus key. Um, I think it's the same on my other, yeah, it's the same on Texas Instruments calculator. You might have a plus minus key or a plus and a minus with arrows. So I have to press mine first. Some calculators, you press it second. So you're going to have to play with this. If you ever have trouble using your calculator and you can't figure out how the heck you're going to do that, um, you know, let me know. Send me a picture of your calculator. We'll work it out together. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and hit enter and then hit divide by three. And why did I do that? Well, I suddenly realized that I didn't know how this calculator would accept the order of operations. And if I did a divided by three, I believe it would have understood what I meant, but I was worried that it would divide just the negative 0.4 by three. And I wasn't sure. And I didn't check ahead of time because, um, I don't know, I, I guess unprepared. Oh my gosh. Hashtag unprepared. So, but you can always do that. You can always stop in the middle, enter, and then go ahead and divide by three. And there we go. Woohoo. So that means that X, which is E to the negative 0.4 all over three is approximately, remember we use the wiggly, wiggly equals to mean approximately zero point. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to change the way I'm writing this. Pardon me. I'm not going to do the wigglies yet. Sorry about that. I'm going to do equals because I'm going to write out the actual. So when I write out what the exactly what the calculator tells me with dot, dot, dots, I put in an equals there. And then when I've actually done the rounding, that's when I do the wiggly equals. Okay, three decimal places. So we're going to look at the four. And I'm going to see that's small. It's, it's less than five. So I'm just going to leave these first three exactly as they are. By first three, I mean the first three digits to the right of the decimal point. Okay, so that's going to be my answer here. Now, when you check this one, if we were to take this answer, let me show you the checking. If we were to take this answer, uh, so and plug it back into, sorry, happy, happy Liam. Let me see if I can get this in. So if I were to take this equation to check this answer, let's go ahead and plug it in. So I'm going to take natural log. Is that nice? It gave me, oops, sorry. It gave me the parentheses already. And then I'm going to write three times 0.223. Close it. Notice that my answer is a little bit different from what the actual answer should be. And that's because we round it. So if you round and you check the rounded value, it's not going to quite work out. You have to check with this value. Okay, so let's go on. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yet again. And I mean, this is a mess. Take a look at this. This is a mess. This is a situation where Liam's ex has really gotten themselves. They're, they're in a mess over here. They're in a mess over here. It just The ex is just all over the place. And oh, oh, Liam Neeson is so, oh. But he does have a particular set of skills. And he, he, he goes in and then suddenly he's like, wait a minute. There's a logarithm on both sides. And they match. Two logarithms, no waiting, matching bases. So these two, pardon me. So this is important that they have matching bases. They're both base E. So if they're both base E, pardon me, Liam, let's put you up here. Oh, he's so worried. 
It's okay, Liam. We got this. We got this. You can do it. Just remember your properties of logarithms. That's why his movies are so long, I suspect, because I haven't seen one yet. Um, but if, if I were to see them, I would think, ooh, these would be so much shorter if everyone understood logarithms better. I think that's true about a lot of action-adventure stress drama movies. If there were more logarithms, the movies would be shorter. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look here. If we have, again, matching bases, and um, not that I'm showing off, but I've got a brand new set of highlighters. I'm so excited. <gasps> look at that beautiful color. Oh. Okay, so since the, the logarithms match, I'm going to tell you something that you can do with logarithms that you we just did with exponentials. Remember I said if you've got the same base on both sides and you've got a base raised up to exponents, the exponents have to be equal. Same thing. If you've got an equation here and both have the same logarithms, then the arguments have to equal each other. And this is, again, this is a very special situation. It does not work necessarily with other situations. So just because things match on both sides doesn't mean you can always just cancel them. This is special to exponentials and logarithms and a couple others. And if you go on in math, we will talk about why that is. This has to do with the fact that natural log and common log, all the logs and the exponential equations are one to one, which means every X has one Y, every Y has one X. It's really beautiful. It's, it's this perfect situation. Um, things like squaring um, situations, like taking X squared or X to the fourth, not one to one. So this doesn't always work, but in logarithms, this works. Okay, so. We did some, some interesting flim-flam, magic happens, and then we get the arguments are equal. Woohoo! Well, this starts out, we're like, oh no, oh, I'm so upset. The X is involved in quadratics, this is just a mess. But the good news is, wait a minute, same X's on both sides, wait a minute. You can subtract X squared from both sides and get 2X must equal 8. But wait, that means that x equals 4. Oh my goodness. Surprise ending. <gasps> Happy Liam. Yay. Okay. Now, when you use interesting techniques and when surprising things happen, it's a good idea to check. Let's go ahead and look. Okay, so I'm going to just do a little, I'm going to scooch this over. Pardon me, Happy Liam. I'm going to do my check over here because that's where my space is. Natural log of 4 squared plus 2 times 4. Does that equal the natural log of 4 squared plus 8? Okay, over here I've got the natural log of 16 plus 8. That's the natural log of 24. And over here, I've got the natural log of 16 plus 8. Oh my gosh, that's the natural log of 24. They do equal each other. Okay, it did work, right? Natural log of 24 equals the natural log of 24. So we've got a good answer. So when do you check? You check anytime you're concerned you might have made a mistake, anytime you just want to ensure that you haven't made a mistake, or anytime there's some interesting steps, you know, you just want to double check. Because every now and again in math, sometimes the steps we take as we're solving are, you know, they can be a little wobbly. And sometimes you can end up with some interesting answers here, which are actually extraneous. In this case, we get, we're good. We're good. Woohoo. Okay, you ready? Are you ready? I feel, I feel like everyone should go hydrate. Okay, I really feel like you should hydrate because we've got... Dun, dun, dun! This is the final problem. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I promise not to sing. Do, 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 do. Okay, Liam is involved in the final countdown. This is the final problem. This is very exciting. I'm very excited. I hope you're very excited. Um, we've got logarithms. 
They look interesting. We've got Liam. Oh, his ex is messed up in so much. Messed up in logarithms, another logarithms. There's a number. What is even happening? Okay. So take a deep breath. Hopefully you are hydrating. I'm hydrating. Oh, okay. So this is going to actually require a very, very special set of skills. These are the skills you just learned about. They may be a little bit new, but this is going to be the skill we're going to need. Now, how the heck do I know this beyond the fact that I'm the teacher? Well, it does help to be the teacher because I'm, especially being a math professor, it, it is true. We know everything and we're always right. Just remember that. Um, except, you know, when we're trying to, you know, sometimes we're wrong if we're trying to like, you know, help, help people with our, you know, just, just, you know, make sure everyone was paying attention sort of thing. But, um, so how would you not being a math professor yet, um, if that's where you're going to go with this, how would you know that suddenly we're using this? Oh my gosh. How do we know this? Well, a couple of things. So in the previous problems, take a look in the, in number three, we had one logarithm, one logarithm convert to exponential form right? Two logarithms, one on each side of the equation. Easy peasy, the arguments have to be equal. What makes this one different? This one's different because we've got two logarithms. They do have the same base. They're both log base 10. But the problem is, is they're both on the same side and we've got another term. So if we've got logarithms, logarithms that are being added or subtracted, then we've got our good friend, the logarithmic properties. Adding two matching logarithms is multiplying the arguments and subtracting them is dividing. So and you can you can kind of see, see how I have two logarithms being added. So that looks like this form. So that's what we're going to use. OK, so we ready? I'm going to ask Liam to step out because we're going to need the whole page for this one. Yeah, this one's yeah. Oh, we'll be we'll be right here. Don't worry. He's very concerned. You talk to your ex on the phone. Calm the ex down. Tell them we've got a crack team of mathematicians going in. We're gonna end this movie in like five ten minutes. Easy peasy. Okay, maybe a few explosions just for fun. Okay, you can go. It's okay. I don't think Liam trusts us. I know it's a hard one. It's okay. There you go. Okay, good. Thanks. Oh, I thought he wouldn't leave. Wow. Some people really love mathematics. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite it as I always do. This is my want. I rewrote it. I wrote in that it is log base 10. Again, you don't have to do this. If that's obvious to you, awesome. I just add that so it's a little bit easier to see. And then I say, okay, I've got... Bring it back. Log base C of A plus log base C of B means I can multiply the two arguments, the A and the B, inside a single logarithm. Now, I can hear you already saying, oh my gosh, why do we want to do this? This is just going to complicate everything. Trust me. I know. Liam's like, I. it sounds like you're having trouble. We're not having trouble. We're good. We're good. It's, yeah, you can go. Okay, so I'm going to take these two and write them together that the log base 10 of x times x plus 9 equals 1. And because I've got my cool, cool new, woohoo, what colors do I want to use? I want to use the dark blue, the x, right? Oh, isn't that beautiful? And let's see. Um, th is this going to be too close? This is probably going to be too close. Let me use this color. Okay, I'm going to use this kind of magenta -y color. Oh my gosh, isn't that gorgeous? Look at that beautiful thing. Okay. Oh, office supply heaven here. So the two log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of the quantity x plus 9 equals log base 10 of x times the quantity x plus 9. I did not do anything to the left or the right side. So far, so good. Now, I, I hear you and I hear Liam being nervous, like, oh, 
And the answer is, I know this got a lot more complicated. What did we do that is a benefit to us? Well, the benefit is I took two logarithms and I made them into one logarithm. So the truth of the matter is we don't know how to solve logarithms, but we do know how to slowly move the logarithms out and bring in exponentials, which we can work with. And so the goal is two logarithms down to one logarithm. And now he's very worried, but now I say, now I've got log base 10 of the thing equals one. Wait a minute. We can convert to exponential because we've got, sorry. Sorry, I can't spell and think and talk at the same time. Sorry, Liam. Um, I can convert to exponential form because there's a single logarithm. So two logarithms. Ugh, what are we going to do? One logarithm. Yes. Awesome. And then remember, we start at the base. We say 10. Go across the equation to the first power. Oh my gosh, I'm already loving this. Equals. And then the whole argument x times x plus 9. Oh my gosh. Easy peasy, right? You can go go talk on the phone with your friends. It's going to be okay. It's, I'm going to bring Liam back later. He's, he's, he's kind of stressing me out right now. Okay, so 10 to the first power is 10. This is, let's see, x squared plus 9x. I recognize a quadratic. I'm going to go ahead and move the 10 over. I get 0 equals x squared plus 9x minus 10. I swear this is something I can, I can go ahead and factor, right? So let's give it a try. With quadratic equations, so we've taken a two logarithm equation, converted it to a one logarithm equation, converted it to a quadratic. And for those of you who who like the formal side of things, we're not actually changing anything. We're just coming up with equivalent equations so that the solutions to this should match the solutions to this, right? That's the goal. Okay, so let's see if I can factor this. <laughs> I've got a negative 10, so I'm thinking hmm, negative 10 equals negative 1 times 10, 1 times negative 10, negative 2 times 5, 2 times negative 5. Oh, you can't see any of that. I'm sorry. It's like I was doing it in my own head. Sorry about that. So all the ways to break down negative 10, because I'm using trial and error. If you're using, you know, one of the other methods, the, the lattice method, the X method, you know, the AC method, all those various other methods, go for it. Do the work you need to do but I see a positive nine in the middle, so I'm gonna try minus one plus 10. And again, remember, if you get these reversed, that's okay. If you have the plus 10 first and then the minus one, go for it. Okay, let's double check. X squared plus 10X minus X is nine X minus 10. Yes, we got it. Okay, then zero property. Do you see how beautiful this is? Do you see how, I, maybe maybe you don't think this is beautiful right now. You're all thinking, ah, this whole problem is going to take a whole page. And I say, yeah, yeah, well, sometimes that happens. But look how beautiful it is. It's got the logarithms. It's got the quadratic. It's got the zero property. It's like, this is like this beautiful problem that walks you through all the different things we've studied in the class. This is so cool. Okay, x minus 1 equals 0, or x plus 10 equals 0, plus 1, plus 1, x equals 1, minus 10, minus 10, x equals negative 10. Life is good. Okay. Now, normally, I'd say, hey, let's not bother checking this. You should check it. You should always check it. Why is that? Well, some interesting things happen. So while we were doing the problem, we started out with logarithms, we combined them, and then we got rid of logarithms. Now, why is that interesting? Well, whenever you get rid of logarithms, you, you cause the math to forget the restrictions on the variable. And I don't know if you remember, but way back when we were first studying logarithms, way back, days and or weeks ago, depending, um, 
we talked about how you can't take the logarithm of a negative number. So if I try to plug negative 10 in here, it's going to go blotto. Let's see. If I check when x equals negative 10, I get log of negative 10 plus log of negative 10 plus 9. Does that equal 1? Right? So remember, whenever you're checking, you always go back to the original problem. And then even if you forgot this, and this is the great thing about calculators, I love them, um, because if you forget something like that, it'll tell you. It, it's, it, they're not always nice about it, but if you say, oh, sorry, I, I got to hit that twice fast. On this calculator, I got to go bong bong. Okay, so log of negative 10. If I just plug that in, just that, ooh, domain error. Now this calculator is smarter than some. Well, it just, I shouldn't say it's smarter. It's been taught how to explain things better to humans. Um, all calculators are incredibly smart. They just don't always know how to tell humans and humans get confused. So if I did it on a different calculator, oops, sorry about the light. Oh, ring lights are great until they're not. Ah, there you go. Oh my gosh, Liam, help me with the ring light. Ah, okay. So if we go over here on this calculator, um, log of negative 10. I'm not sure if it'll, let's see how smart it is. Oh, this one's really smart. It says domain error. Okay, so these two both tell me domain error. Some calculators will tell you syntax error. It just says something bad happened. Domain error, what does that mean? Domain is the numbers that go into a function. It's telling you, you can't put negative 10 into that function. So this is undefined. You can't take the logarithm of a negative number. So this answer can't be true. Okay, let's check x equals one. Now, is it possible to get two answers and um, they end up being both not working? Yes. Isn't that fun? Log of 1 plus log of 1 plus 9. Does that equal 1? Let me scoot you over. So again, I copied down the whole problem. Let me divide these so you can see. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let me clear it. Let's forget that ever happened log of 1 plus log of 1 plus 9 equals 1. Now, why is that? Well, because log of 1, remember, you may not remember, it's been a while, log of 1 is 0 plus log of 10, 1 plus 9 is 10, log base 10 of 10 is 1. It works. Oh my gosh. So um, it depends on your um, the situation. The official answer is x equals 1, but it's also a good idea to write x equals 1, x is not equal to negative 10, because that tells people, that's that gives them more information that you get this extraneous answer of negative 10, but it's not correct. So it, depending on the situation, you would answer one of those two. Okay. Look, Liam, come on back. Liam came back. Oh, so happy, Liam. We, we sorted it out. And there was a fake X. Oh, my gosh. He's a little cranky about that, but that's okay. We got his X back. The world is happy again. You guys are amazing um, and incredible. And go out, celebrate. Yay. And um, I will see you in the next video. Woohoo, woohoo. Math on and woohoo.